friends, welcome again. Now, let us prepare simplex table 1 for the linear programming problem which we have selected to solve through simplex method and we already simplified it and converted it into a form of inequalities from inequalities in the previous video lecture. Now, it is turn of simplex table 1. Since we have 3 constraints in this problem, there will be 3 rows in the simplex table. In the first simplex table, they will form R1, R2, R3, row 1, row 2, row 3 and as we know that in the first simplex table, for a problem having less than or equal to signs in all the inequalities, we will have the select variables as solution variable because the basic variables x and x, x1 and x2 takes value 0 in the first simplex table. The coefficients in first constraint is 4 for x1, 2 for x2, 1 for x1, 0 for x2, 0 for x3, solution value 16. In the second constraint, the coefficient of x1 is 3. For x1, it should be 1 because no coefficient is there with x2. s1 is 0, s2 is there, so 1 and s3 is not there, so its coefficient should be taken as 0 and solution value is 9. Similarly, in the third case, the coefficient of x1 is 3. It is minus x2, so coefficient of x2 will be taken as minus 1, no s1, so 0, no s2, so 0, s3, so coefficient 1 and 9. Now, we have all the three slack variables as solution variable. We have to write their cj values in the column and as well as in the row they are 5, 2, 0, 0 and 0. So 0 for s1, 0 for s2 and 0 for s3 from the cj row or z function. Now we can determine the value of zj. zj 0 into 4 0 plus 0 into 3 0 plus 0 into 3 0 0. In the same way, since we have all these three zeros, all z values will be zero here. Now we can write delta j, that is cj minus zj. 5 minus 0, 5, 2 minus 0, 2, 0 minus 0, 0. This is the first simplex table from the simplified form of the original linear programming problem. Now, our objective is maximization. In case of maximization problem, to have the optimal solution, all the delta j values should be 0 or negative. But in this particular simplex table, all the delta j values are not 0 or negative. These two are positive. So, this is not the optimal solution. And in case of a maximization problem, if the simplex table doesn't show the optimal solution, we have to select highest delta j. When this is maximization case, we have to select highest delta j values, that is 5. So, we have selected it and by this movement, we have actually selected column x1. x1 has become now key column. And divide the solution values by the respective element of key column, that will give us Replacement ratio or minimum ratio. 16 divided by 4 equals to 4. 9 divided by 3 equals to 3. Again 9 divided by 3 equals to 3. As I had told in the previous lecture, there is a small but new point in this case. This is tie between the two minimum ratios. Which minimum ratio should we select? to determine the key row or replacement row. I am going to select this second row and at the same time I suggest you all to solve this problem again through simplex method by selecting the third row and see what happens. A different path will be there but at the end, the same optimal solution will be there with you. 
so i strongly recommend you to do this sum again by simplex method by selecting the third row here at present i am going to select the second row <clears throat> now for us r2 is replacement row or key row the common element of key column and key row becomes the key element we will divide r2 by 3 that process will give us second row of the next table in order that will be r5 when we prepare simplex table 2 that we are going to prepare in our next video lecture so thank you for now we are meeting in the next lecture to prepare simplex table 2 thank you